Hey everyone. Um, so my name's uh, Emily Robinson. Um, should have the slides up here in a second. Uh, I'll be. I'm talking about building an A/B testing analytic system with R and Shiny. So a little more about me, and first, most importantly, that's Abby. She is my part-time dog, as I like to say. I borrow her from my parents. Um, so I'm currently working as, as a data scientist at DataCamp. Um, I'll go into briefly what DataCamp is. We'll make the talk make more sense. But um, it's an online um, learning platform for data science, um, which has courses, practice sessions. It's very interactive. Um, I've been an R user for about seven years. So I was lucky enough to go to Rice University. Um, and when I was studying, Hadley Wickham was there as a statistics professor. And so he had designed uh, some of the R courses. So that's where I first learned R. Uh, I also, and, and you know, as Jared said, uh, socializing is a big part of this conference. So you know, when you see me around the next couple days, uh, some things I really enjoy talking about are um, building and finding data science community and part of the R Ladies New York City chapter. Um, one of the reasons I really enjoy programming as R is that uh, I find it a very friendly and welcoming community. And so I hope you find that here too. Uh, I also like talking about uh, diversity in STEM. Um, so as I said, I'm part of the R Ladies. I really appreciate Jared cares a lot about this too, and you can see that reflected in the speaker lineup. Uh, and of course, R. So, doo -doo -doo. Uh, briefly, this is um, what you might see if you go to a data camp course. Uh, so as I said, it's an online interactive learning platform. So we have Python, R, over 180 courses, um, projects as well. And we're based on a subscription-based model. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically, people can register. And then we have both uh, um, B2C, so like just you know, one of you just signing yourself up, and business-to-business uh, -business subscriptions. Uh, so first, I want to make sure we're all on the same page and define what is A-B testing. So if we have a user, Joe, and Joe logs on and says, I want to learn deep learning. And so Joe comes to Data Camp, and they might see something like this. Um, right, so this is a course page, and it says, right, deep learning in Python. Great. But if we're running an A-B test, they might also see something like this instead. So there are a couple differences here, but the big one we'll see is that we have the registration page. So basically, A-B testing is about um, when you have two, you have, you're randomly assigning people when they come and visit your website to one of two or more different experiences. So the idea basically here is that um, instead of just launching something and try to measuring what change, you're looking at and saying, okay, um, because we're randomly assigning people, uh, the only difference between those who saw the control and the treatment should just be, um, not sure what, I think it's catching up to me now. Um, the only difference between the control and treatment should just be, uh, what we changed on the web page. And so if there is a difference between those groups and things like a registration rate or conversion rate, then that um, is a sign that what we changed um, is the reason that they had this. OK, not sure what's happening here. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, me before data camp. So we saw previously, um, <laughs> It just has like a mind of its own. Um, so before data camp, um, I was working at Etsy. And Etsy, if you're not familiar, it's a big online um, e-commerce platform. And Etsy has, um, you know, over, it's been running experiments for more than six years by the time I joined. Um, it had, as you can see here, over five data engineers working on the experimentation platform, over a thousand metrics computed for each experiment. So it was this very sophisticated online learning, uh, sorry, a very sophisticated um, A-B testing system. And so I came into that, and that's where I first started using A-B testing. And uh, you know, I also really benefited with these five data engineers. It was a very nice UI for experiments. So when I came in the, every morning, I would sort of get my tea, um, sit down, and I would see Catapult, our, our internal tool. And it listed all experiments that were currently running um, and the metrics for each of them. So what we see here is that um, we have two metrics. Um, this is from a blog post, how Etsy handles A-B testing. Um, and we see that, you know, okay, there are two metrics. Um, one of them, there was no change from the control of the treatment, and one of them, it says not enough data. So what does that look like? Um, and the nice thing is, when you have these great engineers who know PHP, we get fancy little pop-ups. And so we see here that, okay, um, there was no detectable change. We get what was the observed rate, what's the change, what's the confidence interval, p-value, power. Um, 
And then if we see not enough data, we would see that, OK, um, your metric is not powered yet for 1% change. So this is how we help solve the peaking problem, so checking the data too soon. So we can see, yes, the p-value is significant here. Um, but we're saying be a little cautious, because you might be checking the results too early. So this is the system I was working with. Um, and then I come into DataCamp, and DataCamp, um, I was brought in to help build their A-B testing system. And this is basically how I felt. <laughs> So I <laughs> came in here, um, and I, I, to be clear, uh, since this is being recorded, I had not lied on my resume. Um, uh, they, they, knew, they knew sort of my experience at Etsy and A-B testing. Um, but you know what? the difference here was that I wasn't coming into a fully formed system. So I wasn't just doing, um, you know, working in a system that was already functioning. I, there was no system for planning, analyzing, or presenting experiment results. We hadn't really started doing that yet at DataCamp. Um, and there also was no data engineer to help build it. So this was all on me. So my first lesson I want to give in this talk is to build tools that empower yourself. Uh, so when I started, um, A-B testing is really about one thing, uh, and that is conversions. So it's all about who did this and then did that. So it may be, if you're an e-commerce website, maybe that's buying. For data camp, it might be with subscriptions. But we could even count a conversion as something like a course start, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be paying money. Um, and so this is really, uh, you know, who, at first this, then that. So who here has had questions like, you know, first, who tried X, then did Y? Um, who are the people, what percent of people who did X, then did Y? What was the last thing people did before doing Y? Um, what are all the things people did after doing X? So these types of questions, these are time-based questions. And you know, with an A-B testing, I'd have exactly these types of questions. So I might do something uh, in talking about, all right, what about uh, subscription rate? So if I had a pricing page, um, what course did people start after seeing the course search page for the first time? Okay, what were the ad clicks that had a course start within two days? So these, are, again, are like time-based questions, right? And this sounds like maybe it's kind of simple, but I want to walk through three users of actually some of the challenges that are here. So if we look at three example users of DataCamp, um, and this is their path. So this is over time. We see, for example, Josh uh, and Lynn, and uh, they have their page views and conversions. Um, and again, depending on the context, a conversion might be um, a course start, um, and the page view might be an ad click or a course search page. So, and then we have Steve. So I want to go through and like how, okay, if I were looking at this, what would be the connections I would draw depending on my question? So if I had the course started after first course search page, so I'm looking at Josh here, and then I want to see, okay, so what's the first course search page, and where's the first course start? Okay, so it's those two. Great, so Josh, that was kind of easy. All right, let's go on to Lynn. So with Lynn, um, we see that Lynn has the course start before she had um, a course search page view. Uh, and so that is then we're connecting the second course start, right? Because we need to have the course started after the course search page. We don't care about what Lynn has done before. Uh, and then the final one, Steve, we can see that um, here we have, right, we do a slightly longer time period. All right, so there's his course start, his course search page view, and we connect those two. Seems simple. OK. Now what if we change it up and we're looking at all ad clicks followed by a course start within two days? And this is a very arbitrary time period. But now we see, right, Josh has multiple conversions. So we see, all right, he had the ad click at first and then a course start. And then he had two more ad clicks. And each of them was followed by the same course start. Um, but we want, so we draw both those connecting lines. And then we see um, Lynn as well. She just has one. And then Steve, we see, actually is none at all. So Steve's ad click is too far away from the course start. So when I was doing all of this, I had this kind of very lengthy, repetitive code. And I was saying, all right, so if I was doing a left join, you got to summarize, get the first registration, you know, then kind of doing some ad counts, percentage, et cetera. So this, um, you know, it is a little bit hard to switch back and forth. So if I was switching from, OK, I want to take their first followed by the next one, if I want to do it within a time period, you know, I'd sort of be redoing a lot of code. And it wasn't that easy to switch back and forth between them. Uh, and then you click through. Yeah. So there's lots of copying and pasting, which, you know, as we know as coders, we don't want to do too much of that. It can lead to mistakes. 
Um, and I had to, it was hard to switch between different types of funnels. So the solution here is, uh, you know, more possible questions we might have, right? So even more than the two I started, who subscribed for the first time after seeing the pricing page? So then I care, I wanna make sure they've never subscribed before they saw the pricing page. I'm just looking at first time subscribers. And you know, what was the last page people saw before starting the course? What are all the courses people started after visiting the homepage? So a bunch of different, if this, then that, you know, inner joins, just people who did both, left joins, percentage, et cetera. So we have all these types of questions. And you know, the next step for doing that is, um, click next slide. Um, you know, and when you have repetitive tasks, we have Hadley Wickham here telling us, we got a time to write a function, right? If you're doing lots of copy and pasting. And what I'll actually add to that is that it's also time sometimes to write a package. Um, so when you have a function can be great, you know, but a package can help bundle all of that together and make it a little bit easier to use across different scripts. Um, so we only had one issue here. Okay, great. Now it's time to write a package. And that was that I had never written a package before. So I was coming in and I said, okay, I have this task and how am I going to do this? Can you click the next slide? Um, uh, keep going. So I was sitting there like this poor, very confused pug saying, I don't really know. All right, I, I sort of, I'm, I'm going to listen to the great Hadley Wickham, you know, my teacher of old, um, but I don't really know how to write this package. Um, now, fortunately, um, I did really luck out in my workplace. Um, and that's because uh, I had David Robinson. <laughs> Why are you, oh, oh, wait a second, that, not, sorry, not, not that David Robinson, if only. Um, no, no, no. I had this David Robinson, uh, who actually is my brother as well. Uh, so he, if you're not familiar with him, he worked at Stack Overflow. He's chief data scientist at Data Camp, um, and, and it's written some great packages like Tidy Text and Broom that you might have used. Uh, so Dave um, helped me out in starting this package funnel join. So you can find it online um, at GitHub Data Camp Funnel Join. Uh, and what it does is it takes different types of funnels. So whether you're saying, I want the first time someone did this, and then the first thing, you know, first time they did X, and then the first Y after that. I want all X's and Y's from the same person that happened within two hours. Um, I want any, you know, combination of the pair. And so you can really easily switch in these time-based joins. Uh, and I'm just going to give a brief demonstration um, of how the code might look. So if we go to the next slide, um, this is a after join function, and that's funnel join's main function. Uh, and there are a couple of points here. So we see um, first, if you keep clicking through, um, that we have the first table, so a pricing page view. Um, and then we have a second table, whether people subscribed. We tell, OK, what are the user column names? Uh, what are the time columns? So this is telling it, okay, how do I tell, um, you know, which happened first and second? Then I have the type of after join, which you can read about in the documentation. And so in this case, I want to take the first time someone viewed a page and their first subscription afterwards. And finally, the type of dplyr join, um, so like an inner, left, etc. So on the next slide, I'll show how it changes really easily if you want to do a different type of time-based join. So now we're looking at within gap. So if we go back one slide, um, we see that this is um, saying now all we changed was the type to within gap. Um, and then we looked at the, we added this argument DT, which is saying a diff time. So now it's only joining them when there's a two days or smaller gap. And so what I've done here is I've tried to make it really easy to switch um, to look at different types of time-based joins. Um, and on the next slide, I'll show how, you know, funnel join, there's many different funnel types, as I mentioned. So there's last before, first after, smallest gap, any, any, et cetera. Um, it supports all type of dplyr joins, so whether you want to do a left join, an anti, a semi, et cetera. Um, uh, bug fixes, pull requests, feature requests, all welcome. As I said, it's up on GitHub. And I really encourage you to try it yourself. Uh, I will say a bit of a note of caution in that it is still under construction. We're very actively using it at data camp, um, but just be a little careful. Oh, and also it does work on remote tables. So if any of you have used dbplyr, right? So you can basically, it's translating SQL code in R. Funnel join, um, because it uses dplyr on the back end, will work with remote tables. Um, so, and now I want to go into uh, my next lesson, which is on A-B testing, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Um, so basically, we've had a couple things happen at Data Camp um, when I was first starting out. 
And it even happens at you know old shops like Etsy too. So some things that has happened, um, if we keep clicking through, is that people are put in both the control or the treatment group. And this should never happen, right? The idea is you're randomly assigned based on your cookie, and you should stay in your control or treatment group. Um, so some of the other things that happen is that people in the experiment have no page views. So we see this experiment start event, but we haven't recorded basically any other activity on DataCamp. Uh, people have multiple experiment starts in the same group. So, okay, they stayed in the control, but they should only enter the experiment one. Why are we seeing them having five experiment starts? Um, there aren't the same number of people in the control and the treatment. So here, that's called the big issue called bucketing skew. So it should be that if you said it's going to be 50-50, that's what it should end up being. And if it's not, something has gone wrong in your setup. Um, and experiment starts didn't have cookies. So we couldn't track um, the user. So if we didn't have recorded with the experiment start a cookie, we couldn't see what else they did. I'm also not sure how I ended up with that red dot. Um, yeah, it's just hanging out there. Um, so one thing we did was that um, A-B testing sanity checks. So this was saying, OK, let's try to figure out early on and make sure that these things aren't happening once we are finding these data integrity issues. Um, so you always need to check your assumptions when you're making. So we had never thought that we'd have people without page views or that we'd have people um, in, you know, coming in who didn't have a cookie. Um, but we were starting to find this, so we realized, OK, in every experiment, we need to check and make sure this isn't happening. Can you click the next slide? Um, so the initial solution, if we go through here, is that, all right, I had all these R's code. I was like, OK, let me check this thing. Has anyone had the experiment more than once? Is there a bucketing skew? You know, um, if we keep going, there with some things like, OK, um, is there, does everyone have a cookie? And so I was just like writing these lines of R code and copying that into every script I was running for an experiment. Um, so, you know, does anyone switch variant, et cetera? What proportion of domain user IDs are null? Um, so just all these different problems. Um, and if we go to the next slide, we can see that this is a similar problem to before. So you've seen this advice when you've written the code three times, write a function. Um, and I actually want to change that a little bit. So if we click through, we'll see when you've run the same process three times, I actually suggest making a dashboard. So sometimes it's very handy to write the same function, um, you know, but that still is a little bit repetitive. So I want to say build tools that also empower others. So on this next slide, we'll see a tool that I've built for uh, data camp, which is a health checks dashboard. And so this is all fake numbers, but what we see is now for each experiment, we can monitor um, how many, what percent of duplicate cookies, how many cookies are in multiple variations, which, how many have no page views, um, and that variation size, which will warn us if there are an unequal split between the control and the treatment. So this is something that is even easier than me running the same function for each experiment, is just have it run automatically in the dashboard. Um, and on the next slide, we'll see that I've also built some dashboards for monitoring experiments. So as we click through here, we see first, we see all the, we can choose to see the running experiments, the recent experiments, et cetera. Then we look at experiment metrics. Okay, do we want to look at registrations, uh, course starts, exercise starts? We can see now for each experiment, all right, what's the rate in the control, in the treatment, percentage change, and the p-value. And it will change colors based on that p-value. Um, and if we click to the next one, we'll see that um, we also add confidence intervals. So it's not, uh, so even, I'm very lucky at DataCamp that a lot of people have some technical and statistical skills. But even if you don't, I think you can sort of grasp an intuition from this um, that, all right, so if the confidence interval is very far from zero and small, Maybe it's real change. If it's you know just barely not overlapping, maybe we're a little more skeptical. Um, so if we look at the next slide, all right, how can we keep leveling up? So I had a common request of what percent increase can we detect in a two-week test? Um, and so the next part, uh, it looks at, um, all right, so I'd be answering this question. And I was getting to the point where I could answer it you know, pretty easily. Um, but I, you know, it would be better if other people could answer it for themselves. So if we click to the next part, um, doo -doo -doo. you know, can I make a tool that people can answer this and without code? So even with having some technical colleagues, sometimes you don't want them to have to switch to code. Um, so it's going from delivering information to discovering information. Uh, and, you know, I said, all right, challenge accepted. How can I make a dashboard that people will be able to do this? Um, and on the next slide, we'll see the impact calculator that I created. So this was here, you could choose what's the population of your tests, what's the URLs, 
Do we only want signed in, signed out people, et cetera? Um, and then we can see, all right, um, this is how many uh, people um, are in the courses, uh, how many, what percent start chapter, et cetera. And on the next slide, what I've paired this with is a power calculator. So it will say, okay, based on that, um, you will be able to detect this size increase. Uh, so now people could look for themselves and say, oh, if I want to do something on this page, well, it only has 10% of people starting a course. That will, I need a 20% increase. That's probably not going to happen. Um, so just in conclusion, um, going to the next slide, we see these are the main uh, three lessons, right? which is first, build tools that empower yourself. So this was the funnel join package. Um, and the second lesson was to build tools that also empower other people, which are often dashboards. Uh, and finally, everything that can go wrong will go wrong, so definitely check your assumptions. Um, and many thanks to the growth and data science teams at DataCamp, um, to my co-authors, Anthony Baker and Dave Robinson of the funnel join package, and to the analytics and data engineering teams at Etsy. Uh, with that, thank you all so much. You can find my blog, uh, hookedondata.org. If you want to try out Funnel Join yourself, um, as again, you can find it at github.com slash datacamp slash funnel join. And thank you.